How much solar power do I need to charge my electric vehicle? This is a question I've been asked quite often and thankfully the answer is pretty straightforward but for some the amount of solar energy needed to offset their EV at home is rather shocking especially for those that have long commutes on a regular basis or have multiple electric vehicles. Now in this week's video, I'm going to break down the actual numbers and the math for you and show you how you can calculate the amount of solar panels needed to recharge your EV with the sun. But before I share my secrets with you, please take a second to subscribe to the channel. It only takes a second and it really helps with YouTube's algorithms. And for those of you interested in going solar that live here in our area of Southern California, then visit us online to receive a hassle-free quote. We really do make it easy for you to make the switch to clean renewable energy with award-winning products from Enphase Energy, LG Solar, REC, Qcell, and even Solaria. All right, so let's talk about electric vehicles for a second because in order to figure out how much solar you need, we first need to know the miles per kilowatt hour the vehicle will get. As of this video, the industry average is around three miles per kilowatt hour. This is factoring in highway, highway and city driving for the average. Now, some electric vehicles are pushing upwards of four miles per kilowatt hour, but this will always vary based on real world conditions. I've included a helpful link in the description below to ecocostsavings.com who put together a really extensive list of electric vehicles and their kilowatt hours per mile. I'm not sure if they calculated these numbers on real world conditions or EPA testing, I'm guessing EPA, and I don't know why they calculated it on the kilowatt hours per mile. I really don't think it's very helpful for this video in particular, but I digress. So I picked a couple cars on this list, uh, a 2021 Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus, the Lucid Air Grand Touring 20 inch wheels, and the 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E California Route 1. I mean, geez, the, the car names have gone so crazy. I wanted to do this calculation on these three vehicles because they all varied slightly in the miles per kilowatt hour. And that way you can see the actual impact of the range has on how much solar you actually need. And surprisingly, it's not a big difference. Starting with kilowatt hours per mile, we need to actually convert this to miles per kilowatt hour. It's much easier when you're going in this direction, at least in my opinion. We basically just need to divide the number one by kilowatt hours, because we want to know one kilowatt hour, how many miles we can get. So once we do that, we can come up from there. So in all these, I have an Excel spreadsheet that I've broken this all down into, but I'm kind of giving you the formula at the same time. Once we have that figured out, we need to estimate the annual miles we'll be driving per year and divide it by the miles per kilowatt hour we just came up with. So in this example, I'm using 15,000 miles. We would take 15,000 miles divided by four kilowatt hours or three kilowatt hours per mile, either or, whichever one you're doing on your vehicle. For those of you that had multiple electric vehicles, you actually wanna add all of the mileage together. This will give us the annual kilowatt hours for all the vehicles you need to charge for the entire year. For fun, I put an estimated cost to recharge from the grid at a rate of 25 cents, roughly. I mean, it's a little more, 0.258 per kilowatt hour. You may get a cheaper rate from your utility depending on your time of use rate structure. Um, it may be higher, heck, I, it really depends. Either way, this really, I find this important because it helps you figure out if solar makes sense or if it's just cheaper to pay the utility company to charge the car. Now, you just multiply your annual kilowatt hours that we just came up with by the utility rate that you'll be charging the car at and that's gonna give you your annual cost um, for the car. Now, let's find out how many solar panels we need. We're, not, we're getting there, but not quite there, to charge the EV throughout the year. And in order to do that, we have to convert kilowatt hours to watts or kilowatts. The easiest way to do this that I have found without overcomplicating things, because it can get really complicated at this point, is to use phi 
which is 1.618. I have found that the golden ratio is pretty good at providing a general estimate when converting kilowatt hours to watts. Remember, there are a lot of factors for figuring out solar production, specifically the kilowatt hours like azimuth, orientation, geographic locations, shading, equipment. I mean, there's all kinds of variables here. And we're kind of doing things backwards, which makes it even harder. But I have found that phi will get you going in the right direction and then you can just adjust accordingly based on your home. So we take your annual kilowatt hours and divide it by 1.618 to get the watts. Now, for those of you that wanna know the kilowatts, you'll just divide the watts by a thousand. Now we're getting close to knowing how many solar panels we need to offset the EV for the year. We just divide the solar system size that we got in watts by the wattage of the panels we'll be installing. In my example, I use a 380 watt solar panel. I thought that was a pretty good starting point. Now, if you're adding this to an existing solar system, it may not be too ex extensive or expensive uh, to add on to your system. It really depends on your mileage, but everybody's situation is gonna be unique here. The best thing for you to do is to actually know what you have currently installed on your home for solar, what the solar inverter is, what are the solar panels, and then request a quote from us. That way we can better assist you in providing you with an estimate to add on. As an added perk, I'm actually including this Excel spreadsheet that I've been using in this video down in the description below for you to download. I just hope that any of you that choose to use it will like this video and hopefully subscribe to the channel. For those of you that have multiple electric vehicles or drive a lot of miles every year, it can get pretty crazy on how big of a solar system you actually need. Most homeowners we install solar on today that don't have electric vehicles usually need somewhere around 18 to 24 solar panels, which makes the system size somewhere between six to nine kilowatts. But we're installing more and more 40 and 50 panel projects, which means they're looking at 15 to 20 kilowatts in size. That's double. And the only two variables that have changed here is they either own an electric vehicle and drive a lot of miles per year, or B, have multiple electric vehicles and they all have small, modest commutes. Either way, an electric vehicle can add a substantial amount to your current energy usage. Going solar will help offset or eliminate your electric bill. That's the truth. And it can help cover some or all of the cost to charge your electric vehicle at home. But if you're working on transitioning to an all electric life, it actually may be a bit harder to cover 100% of your energy needs because roof space is going to be your bottleneck. 40 and 50 solar panels takes up a lot of space. We're talking over a thousand square feet needed on the roof without even taking into account fire setback requirements. But take that as a grain of salt because solar panel manufacturers, battery manufacturers, EV manufacturers are all working tirelessly to improve the technology, to get more miles per kilowatt hour, to cram more energy into smaller battery cells and to capture even more sunlight from fewer solar panels. So for right now, most of you switching to solar and buying your first electric vehicle should be totally fine. You have nothing to worry about. But for the future of solar, the future of electric vehicles, the future of batteries, it may be a different story. It's really hard to say right now. As long as the innovations continue, it, you may not have to pay a small fee to the utility companies, but only time will tell. And either way, you're still saving money because gas is pretty expensive. I did include a gas calculation in here to show you savings in my spreadsheet. Well, that's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Don't forget, we're in the business of installing solar. So if you need to add on to your existing system or haven't actually made the switch to solar yet, I don't know why you haven't done it, but it's okay. Visit us online to receive your hassle-free quote. Trust me, we make it easy for you to go solar. No BS, no haggling, no hard sales. We simply give you our best price up front. You just have to follow that link on the screen to request a quote. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.